In today's program, positive updates for people wanting to travel to Thailand as Pattaya plans to welcome foreign tourists who arrive through the Phuket Sandbox 7 Plus 7 program, while the Center for COVID-19 Situation is considering a single standard procedure for reopening the entire country. But meanwhile, Japan plans to donate 1.3 million doses of its locally produced AstraZeneca vaccine to several Asian countries, including Thailand, which was supposed to be the country to supply the region. Details on these stories and many more coming right up. You're watching Thailand News Today, your Monday to Friday update for news in Thailand and beyond. We publish on the Tiger Channel along with our other shows like our Good Morning Thailand and Tiger Bites talk shows and our new Morning Top Stories News Roundup. As for our first story, Thailand's tourism minister now says that Pattaya's reopening to foreign tourists will join the Phuket Sandbox 7 Plus 7 extension program. According to a Pattaya news report, the minister confirmed the plan while on a visit to the area on Sunday. It's understood the proposal will go to the Center for COVID-19 Situation Administration for approval this Friday, along with proposals for the October the 1st reopening of Bangkok and Chiang Mai. The minister said the model will offer foreign tourists the opportunity to travel to Shonburi in a 7 plus 7 extension. Travelers from overseas who enter Phuket through the Sandbox program are able to travel to Chonburi province after spending seven days on the island and vice versa. Now, if approved, Pattaya will join Phuket, Krabi, Panga, Suratani, Bangkok, Chonburi, Pechaburi, Bajok Hirikan, and Chiang Mai as part of the Sandbox 7 plus 7 scheme. Fully vaccinated foreign tourists who have a negative PCR test result will be able to travel to designated areas without undergoing quarantine. Along with reviewing the proposal on Pattaya's reopening, the CCSA will also reconsider the rules for reopening the country as a whole, possibly scrapping mandatory quarantine and sealed routes for certain provinces. The adoption of the One Standard Operating Procedure, One System Model, or One SOP, One System Model for short, for the reopening of Pattaya, Chiang Mai, Hua Hin, Cha'am, and Bangkok from October the 1st is being submitted to the CCSA next week and also includes a proposal to half the costs of COVID-19 tests. According to a Bangkok Post report, the Tourism Authority of Thailand Governor says the Samui Plus model will also change to being quarantine-free around the same time. Under the current plan, tourists are required to spend the first seven days on Samui and can travel to neighboring Gok Tao and Gok Pangan from day eight. The tourism official says provinces included in the reopening plans will have the same standard operating procedures, which he says will enable tourists to travel freely within designated areas. Travelers will need to follow guidelines like activating the Mochana app and checking in with a SHA Plus hotel manager each day instead of being kept in quarantine or only traveling under a tour program. The tourism official acknowledges that the costs of mandatory PCR testing is proving a significant deterrent in both the Phuket Sandbox and Samui Plus schemes. He says the tourism authority is in talks with health officials to reduce the cost to around 8,000 baht for three tests. Japan is planning to donate 1.3 million doses of its locally produced AstraZeneca vaccine to several Asian countries. 300,000 of the doses will go to Thailand. The other doses will go to Vietnam, Taiwan, and Brunei. Back in July, Japan donated just over 1 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine to Thailand, which was said to be used primarily for elderly people living in Bangkok, which is the epicenter of Thailand's latest wave of cases. Thailand has had a limited supply of vaccines during the country's most severe wave of COVID-19, infecting more than 1 million people since April the 1st. The AstraZeneca vaccine is being locally produced by Siam Bioscience, which is wholly owned by a subsidiary of the Crown Property Bureau and had ambitious plans of being the vaccine's distribution hub for Southeast Asia. The factory has since fell short of its delivery promises to several countries, including its domestic production target. 
Meanwhile, Thailand is accelerating the rollout of vaccines for pregnant women. Over the next month, the Ministry of Public Health plans to vaccinate as many as 100,000 pregnant women. The Deputy Public Health Minister says that pregnant women are inherently vulnerable as they are likely to develop severe symptoms which lead to death or cause premature birth, an outcome that could have long-term effects on the development of the child. A recent survey of COVID-19 infections among more than 3,000 pregnant women found that within six weeks after giving birth, 73 of the women died and 154 newborns contracted COVID-19. According to Thai PBS, the Health Department Director General says many pregnant women have not been vaccinated because they are concerned about the effectiveness or safety of the vaccines. He said there needs to be a campaign to urge the women to get vaccinated due to the increased risk of developing a severe infection. The education minister says schools can reopen for in-class learning from November the 1st, provided enough students are vaccinated. Addressing a press conference, the minister confirmed the plan to reopen schools following consultation with health officials and the interior ministries. The reopening hinges on the rollout of Pfizer vaccine doses, which will be offered to students between the ages of 12 and 17 from next month. The vaccination will be carried out only with parents' permission, with students in the dark red provinces prioritized. According to a Bangkok Post report, there were over 15,000 educational facilities in the dark red zones. Around 70% of teachers around the country have now been vaccinated, and the education minister says under the plan, all school employees will be inoculated. A woman has shared a screenshot of a message she received from a Food Panda driver telling her she should wear a bra. The post has since gone viral, sparking outrage among Facebook users. The customer said, quote, Customer, when you come out to pick up your stuff, please wear a bra. I don't feel comfortable. The incident has been heavily criticized on social media, with users pointing out that many women do not wear a bra at home because it's more comfortable. Other food delivery riders have chimed in to defend the rider, with some people accusing women of going braless to seduce them. They've clearly watched too much porn. And in what some might see as an example of victim blaming, drivers have urged women to wear a bra to protect themselves against the threat of sexual violence. The Bangkok Post reports that Food Panda has issued a statement of apology, saying the matter will be investigated and the driver will face consequences. But many say the company's response is not enough. Some authorities and women's rights groups say companies like Food Panda need to screen their workers properly, though they didn't specify how such a screening is possible. Elephant rides are being used to motivate people in Thailand to get vaccinated against COVID-19. In a community in Surin, some residents were able to ride an elephant to a nurse and receive the injection while seated on the animal. With the rise of infections in Surin province, authorities are accelerating the local vaccination campaign to get residents in high-risk groups vaccinated as soon as possible. And in Surin's Ampe Tatum district, a local hospital has organized elephant rides for those getting vaccinated. If you enjoyed this report, subscribe to the Tiger Channel and keep the notification bell on to stay on top of the latest news stories. And check out the video that just popped up here to continue watching content on the Tiger. Thank you for watching and you're now up to date on the Tiger.